All right, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. Please let me know if you cannot. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Strothkamp. I am an educator for the St. Louis Zoo. And today we are going to do a webinar all about animal heroes. But first, I would like to start off with doing some um, community standards for those of us who have not been able to attend a webinar with us yet. I'm just going to read through them um, real quick and then we'll get jump right in. So first off, I will be friendly and respectful of others in my interactions in the chat box. The chat box is located at the bottom of your screen. I will use the Q&A box for relevant and appropriate questions. Q&A stands for questions and answers. Um, so if you have any questions or out, please feel free to add those in there. Also located at the bottom of your screen. I will use the chat box to respond and interact in regards to the webinar topic. And I understand that if the moderator of this webinar has asked me to alter my behavior in the chat, um, I may be removed from the webinar. And then we'll go over some, just before we get started, I see that some of us have already done this, but if you could feel free to put in the chat box um, where you are from and how many of you are listening with us today. We just would really love to have that information for the zoo. Also, if you can find the Q&A box, as I said, located at the bottom of your screen, that would be an amazing place to put any questions or answers you have throughout the process. I'm going to try my best to answer as many as I can at the end of the webinar. Um, also, if you have not already noticed, we do have another person with us. Her name is Chris. She is my tech person. So you may see her answering some of your questions or you may see her responding in the chat box to you. So don't be alarmed. She is also a zoo educator as well. Also at the very end of the webinar, while I'm answering the questions, um, we're gonna take a really quick enjoyment poll. If you could please let us know um, if, how you enjoyed the webinar today, it would be very thankful and appreciated. So how I started this webinar, how I kind of put it together is I gave our amazing animals um, different categories. Um, so you'll see throughout the entire uh, webinar, we have different animals and they're kind of uh, labeled with what amazing things to do. So our first one are our reducers. And these are animals that will kind of minimize or take away particles and make them smaller. So at the St. Louis Zoo, we have an educator. Her name is Leslie and she lives by the zero waste life. So I don't know if you have gotten a chance to check out her amazing uh, videos she's done on the zoo's website, but these are some of the photos of her compost bin in her backyard. So the first one is a compost bin. The second one is gonna have soldier fly larvae in it. And these are um, insects that will actually break down some of our old food wastes that we might not be able to use or eat any of. And what they'll do is they'll take that um, food waste and turn it into really nutrient rich soil that we are able to reuse and put back into the earth. We can plant native flowers with it. We can maybe fertilize with it. So they are pretty amazing, awesome animals. All right, let's see what we got next. We have the darkling beetle. So we do have these at the St. Louis Zoo. They are located in our insectarium but I have a question for you first. In the first photo, we have the larvae form of the darkling beetle, beetle I'm sorry. And I would like to know um, with this poll question, if you can guess what they might be eating. So Chris, if you could pull up our first poll question, it says, what do you think these mealworms are eating in this picture? Could it be snow? Could it be cheese? Could it be whipped cream? Or could it be styrofoam? What do you guys think that these larvae may be eating? All right, Chris, if you could please send that poll. Thank you very much. So it looks like we have snow and styrofoam. So those are my friends that answered styrofoam. You are correct. So mealworm larvae are able to break down styrofoam. And so it's not gonna go back into our earth and our landfills because if we were to put styrofoam in there, it takes millions of years to be able to decompose or break down into small particles, which is not very good for our environment. So darkling beetles are super duper amazing at helping our environment. All right, let's see who we have next. So we have our reuser and he is amazing or she. 
They are the bald eagles. So those of us that do not know where the term bald eagle comes from, if you notice on their head, they have white feathers. So they have it on their head and their neck. The reason this is, um, or why they're called the bald eagle is because if you will see these birds far, far away, a lot of people thought that they didn't have anything on their head because white's kind of hard to see at a distance. So they called them a bald eagle. Speaking of that, if you look in the very middle of your screen, you will actually see a bald eagle's nest. So these nests are normally about 100 feet above the ground, so they're super high up. And what they do, or why they're called the reuser superhero, is because they will reuse their nest over and over and over again. So they'll start out small, and then they'll keep adding things over and over. So more sticks, more leaves, more feathers, each season when they're getting ready to lay eggs. And they'll make it bigger, 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 bigger. So that looks like a pretty large nest. And speaking of nests, I have another question for you. So Chris, if you could pull up our next question, I would appreciate it. So when it comes to birds nesting, what type of materials do you think that it's okay for humans to provide birds with? So do you think we can provide them with dryer leg? What about fur or yarn or some grass? What do you think it's okay for us as humans to give birds to use when they're ready to nest? Thank you guys so much, Chris, if you could please close that for me. Perfect, so I see we got kind of answers across the board, but what the birds are, or what our zookeepers at our bird department suggest us uh, giving our animals is actually our birds in our backyard is um, natural materials, so grass. But if we give them grass, we need to make sure that it doesn't have any chemicals in it. So if you use like fertilizer, things like that, it wouldn't be the best thing to give them. But like sticks or twigs or branches like that. So if you're doing yard or doing some yard work, you can leave those out. Birds would love to be able to use them. Okay. All right. Let's see what amazing super animal we have next. So these are one of the most important animals I think we have are the pollinators. And why they get their name is because, did you know that one out of every one in three bites of food that you have, out of one out of every three bites that we eat of food, they help create that. So they pollinate over 90% of our, our plants we have around. And how that works, if you guys can look really closely at the, um, the insect in the left-hand corner of your screen, on that purple flower, you can see that it is wearing its pollen pants. And that is a silly term that we use at the zoo where the bees will get the pollen stuck on them and they'll actually, when they fly from flower to flower, it pollinates them. So it makes them grow and provide us with different types of food. And in Missouri, can you believe we have over 400 different kinds of bees? I know, it's crazy. And speaking of pollinators, I want to introduce a different one that you might know of. If you guys have ever been to the St. Louis Zoo, have you ever seen this animal before? I want to check in the chat box and see if you guys can tell me what this animal might be or what it might, its name might be. Ooh, we're seeing lots of different answers. Very cool. All right. So this animal is a black and white ruffed lemur. So they are considered a primate. Um, and they are found in our primate house at the St. Louis Zoo. And they are also considered an amazing um, pollinator too. Because if you guys look on their nose or on their snout, they, it's pretty long. So what they do is they will go and they'll suck the nectar or out of a leaf or a plant and they'll actually transfer it. And because of these um, lemurs, we are actually able to have a plant that still exists in Madagascar. It is called the traveler's palm. So those of us who aren't familiar with what it is or what it looks like, this is a picture of it. So the traveler's palm, like I said, is located in Madagascar. And without the black and white rough lemurs, this wouldn't exist anymore. So with them being able to pollinate it, we're able to have this plant still. All right. For our next animals, we have the seed dispersers. 
And I wanted to talk about two different ones that we have here at the zoo. We have our Asian elephants and our grizzly bears. Our Asian elephants, if we don't know, are located in our river's edge. And our grizzly bears are at the Centene Grizzly Ridge. So our grizzly bears, we have two of them. Let's see, does anybody know their names? Well, they are Huck and Finley, and they are brother and sister. So if you look in the left-hand picture on the very top, um, Huck is standing on your left, and then Finley's on your right. And then the big photo in the right is Finley. And then in the middle, this is kind of special, but that is Ronnie, and she is the one that's going to be having a calf here this summer. So we're really super excited about that. But back to why they're amazing superheroes. These animals are really good at being seed dispersers. So what that means is when they're eating all their food or their diet, like uh, plants and berries and seeds, they'll actually eat that, ingest it, go through their tummy, and when they poop it out, they make very own fertilizer. So what that is, is that they'll have different seeds and, and those berries in their poop, which will then get into the soil and create different plants and things like that for other animals. Pretty cool, right? All right, on to our amazing decomposers. These are pretty cool. So, I don't know if you can tell, but with the name decomposers, what might they do? Well, decomposers are amazing because they're able to break down animals. So with their antenna, the two little things on the side of their head, they're able to detect or be able to sense out a dead animal. And it's usually about an hour with af after the animal has passed away. So what, they, what these insects will do is they'll grab the animal, carry it off somewhere, they'll bury it in the ground, and then they'll lay their eggs inside. And then it'll become mummified. And then once the babies are hatched, they will climb back out. So they will be able to reuse, ooh, also a reuser, reuse the dead animals to be able to hatch their young. And they're able to break down a dead animal and be able to put it back into the earth and kind of go with the same life cycle process. So these are pretty powerful animals. So we have an amazing cool project at the zoo. We have, um, it's a wild care center project. It's called the American Bearing Beetle Project. And you can see a zookeeper on the left-hand side. What they are doing is they are putting an ID tag inside the beetle so that we are able to see where they are at after we breed and reintroduce them into the wild. And speaking of that, on the right-hand side, that is um, some of our zookeepers and volunteers reintroducing our pairs of American bearing beetles into the wild. So we have been able to do this and be able to make the population better. So these are one of my favorite superheroes. These are our silent protectors. So we have two different ones. We have the opossum and then we have the white-bellied hedgehog. Both of these can also be found at the zoo. They live in our children's zoo. Um, uh, our opossum might be found in our children's zoo show. And then our white-bellied hedgehog might be inside our children's zoo. Maybe sometimes zookeepers might bring them out. But what these guys are really good at is getting rid of all those kind of bad parasites or helping with the insect population. So it is actually said that opossums in one season, so one entire summer, are able to get 5,000 ticks. They're able to eat 5,000 ticks, which is a lot. And we know that sometimes, sometimes ticks might have a disease or something that might make us sick. So they're not very healthy for us, but usually they don't, but every once in a while. So having an opossum be able to eat them is pretty cool, right? All right, are you guys ready for some fun? We have an opossum break. All right, so I'm gonna stop screen sharing really quick because I'm gonna need your help. All right. So for this opossum break, you guys are going to get to be opossums yourselves. So opossums are pretty good at being kind of actors and actresses, and they're really good. At, they have a special defense that they do. I don't know if you guys know what it is, but I kind of want to see. So I'm going to look at the chat box and see if you guys know what opossums are really good at doing. It's kind of silly. Okay, yes, awesome. So opossums are really
really good at playing dead. How silly is that? Yeah. An animal that plays dead to stay safe? Who knew? So what we're going to do is we are going to embody an opossum. So get in your opossum mode, all my friends out there. So first, what they do when they get really kind of scared is they show their big teeth. Can you show me your big teeth? Okay. And then what they do after that is they hiss. They go, can you hiss? Kind of like a kitty cat. Like, hiss. And then they're going to play dead. So it's hard to play dead when you're standing up, but I'm just going to pretend. You just, whoop, play dead. And then they play dead. All right? So what you're going to do is I'm going to pretend to be a human taking out my trash. And you guys are going to show me what an opossum might do to try to scare me away if I was a predator. Okay? Be right back. So what is that? Oh my gosh, is that an opossum? Oh, oh, it's showing me it's, oh, it's big, oh, it's big teeth? Oh, oh, it's hissing at me. Oh, okay. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just trying to take out the trap. Oh, oh, it's dead. Oh no, what'd I do? Oh, that's kind of scary. I'm, I'm gonna go maybe take my trash out later. You, you'll be okay, okay. How'd you guys do? Did you do, oh. Wow, you guys did amazing. Good job at playing opossum. All right. Now, let's get back to our presentation because I have some great animals left. Okay, so we have fantastic diggers. Do you guys like to dig holes sometimes? Me too, I do. Especially on the beach in the sand. Sometimes I like to dig big holes. But these guys are really good at it and they're also really good at helping protect other animals. So amazing superheroes, right? So we have the African elephant. African elephants are named that because if you look at their big ears, kind of looks like the continent of Africa. And those of us who are unfamiliar with Africa, if you look up on the left-hand top of your screen, that is like what Africa's continent looks like. So what African elephants are really good at is you see those big white tusks, they will actually in the dry climate, so really hot in the desert, they will go and dig, dig, dig in the ground and create a watering hole or a place where animals and themselves are able to nourish their bodies with water. And then on the right hand side, we have the gopher tortoise. These guys are more native to like Florida and some surrounding states like that. But what they're really good at is digging big holes. If you look at their really strong arms and they're really strong, like they have big nails, they are good at big, big digging holes. And those holes are actually helping protect other animals. Because not only do they protect themselves, they can protect like owls and snakes and frogs. And in Florida, they're kind of having some wild flat, wild flat fires. I'm sorry, stumbling over my words, but wildfires, which can harm animals or hurt them. So they have the protection now with the gopher tortoises. So pretty cool animals, right? All right. Now, this is our last animal we're gonna talk about today, but we have, they're pretty important. So we have our water patrollers. So I wanna know, if anybody can be observant and scientists, what are our hellbenders in? What kind of, what is that? What do they look like they're swimming in? Anybody know? Yeah, some of us said water, they are. So hellbenders are a salamander. So they're a type of amphibian. So they breathe through their skin. I couldn't even imagine breathing through my skin, it'd be very hard. But they can breathe through their skin. So they need really fresh, clean water in order to survive. And we actually have, we are the only state that has the two species of hellbenders. They are the Eastern and then the Ozark hellbender. And we have both of them. But we have to make sure our water quality, so like our rivers and things like that, are really fresh and healthy in order to have them live here. So what we do at the St. Louis Zoo is we have a breeding and a reintroduction or reintroduction process. So we have an amazing wild care center as well. And what we would do is we would breed the hellbenders and then reintroduce them into our Missouri rivers. And we have actually reintroduced 7,000 hellbenders already through this project, which is fantastic. Um, and so as you can see, we do have some zookeepers and some volunteers that are showing you what we kind of do here at the zoo with that project. 
All right. Now, I bet you guys are kind of curious and wondering how you can also be some amazing animal superheroes. So I have come up with a couple different things that you can do at home or in your, you know, your community or things like that to be able to be as awesome. So first one, we already kind of talked about it, but composting is really important because you can take all your old food scraps and things that you might not eat and put it in the dirt and be able to have other insects or vertebrae be able to break it down and turn it into really nutrient rich soil. Cool, right? Or you can be, you can plant native plants. And the reason planting native is awesome is because it cuts down on the use of water. Because usually after about a year of you planting this plant, you don't have to water it again, which is awesome. Because then we won't have to waste, we could, won't have to waste water on them and can use it for other things. Then also reusing. So I put an example of paper down because a lot of us might be using, going through paper right now, being at home, especially I do a lot of coloring and drawing and writing, but you know, sometimes paper is two sides, right? So if we use the front side, can we use the back? Yeah. So here I have just a piece of paper I was using, had my notes on it, but on the back, it's clean and fresh. So I'm able to use both sides and cut down on paper waste. The last one and a really cool one that you can do is the citizen science projects. And this is located on citizenscience.org. And what you can do is you can take part in being able to survey and kind of indicate what animals or different plants are around your house. And you can help us be able to identify things. So there's one where you can look at like box turtles and bees and squirrels and just help us know how our earth is doing. All right, so I have a very kind of takeaway or fun activity that you can do at home in relationship to this webinar. So I thought doing an animal hero activity where you can create or draw your very own superhero. So it can be real or pretend, it's up to you, whatever you like, but the only materials you're gonna need is a piece of paper, maybe a reusable piece of paper, and some writing utensils. So I wanted to show you an example of the one that I made, and then you guys can do yours and show your friends and family. They would love to see it. So at the zoo, we have been doing a show called Superheroes, where we are talking about different animals and the kind of cool things that they do as well, just like this webinar. And one of our characters in the show is a frog, and, or a toad, I believe. And his name is the croaker. So I decided to draw the croaker. And the reason I decided to draw the croaker as my animal hero is because they are also really good at getting rid of those parasites or those mosquitoes or things um, that may be a little harmful to us. And they're also really good at water control as well, just like our hellbenders. All right. So this is a time where I'm going to answer those wonderful questions you guys have been waiting for for me and also this will be when Chris is going to put up that enjoyment poll for you guys to be able to answer so please feel free to answer that by answer some questions so I have someone asking if I have ever tried to do any of those ways to help at your home so I just moved not too long ago um so I am quite new to the area but I have been interested in planting some native flowers I have put out some native things for some birds in my backyard. So I have put out like a bird feeder and things like that. And I have put down like some twigs and grass in for their nesting. Um, so I started doing kind of little things around my house, but I'd love to do more. Um, I'm still learning about more of the citizen science projects I'm able to do at home because being learned from being at the zoo, I've learned so many wonderful things we can do to help our earth and our planet. All right, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions for me. It looks like I might have answered all of them, but I do wanna thank you guys so very much for coming to this webinar. My name is Sarah Strathcamp again, and please feel free to check out our St. Louis Zoo's website, and check out all the wonderful, fantastic things myself and other educators are doing in relationship to conservation, and also just some fun videos. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your, your morning.